हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑन क्लासिकल मैकेनिक्स ओके इन दिस वीडियो वील ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दिस सब्जेक्ट इज ऑल अबाउट ओके सो वी स्टार्ट विद द फॉलोइंग फैक्ट दैट वी लिव इन वी लिव इन अ वर्ल्ड वेयर मोस्ट ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट्स अराउंड अस आर मूविंग राइट एंड द मूवमेंट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स इज ऑलवेज अट्रैक्टेड अस वी ऑलवेज वॉन्ट टू स्टडी हाउ दीज मूवमेंट्स हाउ दीज ऑब्जेक्ट्स आर मूविंग and this is not a new subject since ages we are studying uh, we are trying to study the motion of objects this subject study of motion of objects study of motion study of moving objects this subject is classified as mechanics there are so many names for the same subject we call it mechanics we call it dynamics we call it we call it analytical mechanics and so on right so these are all the names of one subject which is study of the motion of the objects and what has happened now over the time we, we because this is a this is an old subject so this subject has evolved over time right nowadays we study you know motion of very small objects so we have something called quantum mechanics okay we have we, we are studying the mechanics of the objects at very different levels like at micro levels or nano levels etc and there are new many new you know perspectives of the subject okay to distinguish this perspective newer perspective from the one which we have since ages we call something which is here as classical mechanics okay so basically mechanics classical mechanics is nothing but mechanics only but just we have a separation that we want to uh, separate our mechanics from you know the newer versions of mechanics like quantum mechanics or nano mechanics etc therefore we classify whatever we have like in the olden days as classical mechanics right so classical mechanics is mechanics only we name it classical just to distinguish it, it from the newer version of the mechanics so classical mechanics is whatever we are studying from ages right so this is a subject of classical mechanics let us study this subject let us start with this subject so there are many concept which i will assume that you already know for example you, i i will assume that you know what is the mass velocity okay space time etc these all are the concepts which we know which we will need for studying the classical mechanics right so i'll start with classical mechanics uh, we'll start with the subject for starting the subject you need a frame of reference okay frame of reference means you need to know how you will measure your distance what is your reference point so we can always fix coordinate axis x y z as our frame of re reference for simplicity okay we don't need more than this right so once you have fixed your frame of references the reference you have an origin you have an x axis you have an y axis then you have a z axis right so let we have a particle somewhere here suppose we have a particle somewhere here right then you have a position vector after deciding the frame of reference you have a position vector of the particle suppose we have a particle of mass m mass m and this mass is generally constant during the motion of the particle in general the mass of the object does not change so we assume that this particle mass is constant so we have a particle of mass m which is constant and suppose r is the position vector of the particle now you must know what is position vector once we have decided the frame then this vector from origin to that uh, position of the particle is called the position vector so suppose r is the position vector now by definition what is the velocity vector velocity vector is defined as de uh, time derivative of position vector so this is what is the velocity vector of the particle right now this is the definition one what is the velocity vector of the particle then we have something called linear momentum what is linear momentum linear momentum tells you how much is the motion contained in the object so this is defined as mass times velocity of the particle M mass times this is a constant and this is a vector so overall we get a vector so linear momentum is a vector which is mass times velocity vector right okay then th these are the two concepts then the third concept is we have called we have something called force 
फोर्स वैक्टर वॉट इज़ फोर्स वैक्टर सपोज वी हैव अ पार्टिकल हेयर एंड सपोज देर आर देर कैन बी मेनी फोर्स इज एक्टिंग ऑन द पार्टिकल फॉर एग्जाम्पल ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स देर कैन बी फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स देर कैन बी इलेक्ट्रोस्टेटिक फोर्स एंड देर कैन बी सो मेनी फोर्स इज एक्टिंग ऑन अ पार्टिकल ओके रिजल्टेंट ऑफ ऑल दीज फोर्सिस रिजल्टेंट ऑफ ऑल दीज फोर्सिस ओके एक्टिंग ऑन द पार्टिकल इज टर्म एज एफ वैक्टर एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एक्सटर्नल फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन द पार्टिकल एक्सटर्नल फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन अ पार्टिकल नोट दैट वी आर टॉकिंग ऑफ अ सिंगल पार्टिकल राइट सो वी हैव थर्ड समथिंग कॉल्ड एक्सटर्नल फोर्स सो नाउ वॉट वी हैव विद अस वी हैव फर्स्ट थिंग वेलासिटी देन वी हैव लीनियर मोमेंटम the notation is p vector for that that is m times v vector then we have force vector okay these are the three things which we have right we have a particle okay in a frame of reference so first thing we have a frame of reference then we have a particle then we have a velocity then we have a linear momentum and then we have force and then now we want to know how to compute this velocity and things like that right so how to do that so we have the picture like this we have a frame of reference okay in this frame of reference we have the concept of velocity we have the concept of linear momentum we have the concept of force right then we want to somehow relate these quantities then comes something called newton second law of motion okay this newton second law of motion comes into picture and it it tells us this second law of motion says that rate of change of linear momentum of a particle is equal to external force applied on the particle okay so we have something called we have something like this that f vector which is external force acting on the particle is equal to rate of change of momentum so this is what we get from newton second law of motion right so after having a frame of reference this fellow newton second law of motion this thing comes into picture and this gives us this right now let us elaborate this thing so we have something like this f is equal to dy by dt of m b vector because this is p my p so if m is constant so this is f vector is equal to dy by dt of v vector times m vector now this is what this is rate of change of velocity rate of change of velocity so this is nothing but acceleration vector by definition therefore we have this thing f is equal to ma okay right so what is this this is the equation of motion of the particle equation of motion of the particle right you can see that this is a second order differential equation i can write it as f is equal to m what is a a is actually dv by dt and what is v v is gr by dt so this is equal to m times g2r by dt2 so we i have from here i have f is equal to m times g2r by dt2 right so if i assume that f does not depend on derivatives of r then this is a second order partial differential equation okay you can uh, sorry not partial ordinary differential equation and we can solve this differential equation if we know the two initial conditions so basically we having a frame of reference and having the u uh, and using the uh, newton second law of motion we reach at a differential equation which can be solved and it will it will give you the path it will give you r as a function of time so basically what you know you know that how your particle will move in this space right so this is all we want to know so this is the very basic of mechanics and we have seen that we have used the newton's second law of motion for the basics of mechanics right now now actually mechanics is based on the concept of mechanics they are based on many conservation laws right what are these laws 
we will study now okay so the first law is conservation of linear momentum law of conservation of linear momentum what is this law we have this thing f is equal to dp by dt okay this is from the newton second law of motion now if f is zero it implies that dp by dt is equal to zero and it implies that p is equal to constant so we have conservation of linear momentum law of conservation of linear momentum as if the external force is acting on a if the external forces acting on a particle r0 then the linear momentum remains constant then the linear momentum of the particle remains constant okay this is the first law right this law these laws will help us in you know uh, calculating tougher things about the motion of the object so this is the first law which we will use again and again this is conservation of linear momentum and this is very simple this comes from the newton second law of motion because newton second law of motion says that resultant external force is equal to rate of change of the momentum therefore if the re resultant external force is zero then it means that rate of change of the momentum is zero it means that momentum is constant right so this is the conservation of linear momentum then after that we have the concept of angular momentum which we will study in the next video okay thank you